Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Mellon, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So uh, you've heard here at the end of Wednesday night, they passed a $2 trillion stimulus plan. <laughs> it's a little bit better. doesn't do what it really needs to do. It doesn't freeze rents and mortgages. Every bill, every bill should just stop. They should just stop it. Venezuela is doing that. I'm going to show you that in a second, but we're not. Richest country in the history of the world. So this is how the three, Trump, Biden, and Bernie, are talking about this. So just, there's a little bit of a difference. President sure. Trump now says he wants to reopen the country for business by Easter. Even as health officials warn the coronavirus pandemic will continue to worsen in the U.S., Easter, as you know, is just 18 days away. That's very close from now. Paula Reed reports from the White House. Easter is our timeline. What a great timeline that would be. President Trump says he wants to see packed Easter services in just over two weeks. I just thought it was a beautiful time. It would be a beautiful time. Of... Hey, Jack Wagon, viruses don't take holidays. It ain't COVID-19, can you, can you respect the fact that this is a Christian country and a lot of, a lot of people celebrate uh, Easter here? Can, can, can COVID-19 just not be so radical of a virus and be a little bit more of a pragmatic, incremental virus? Now's not the time for revolution, COVID-19. Come on, now's not the time. Let's, we just need to settle it down, okay? Idiot. Idiot! Blame the Democrats. This the reason this guy's in power. The Democrats. If the DNC wouldn't have cheated in 2016, Bernie would have gotten the nomination. He would have beat this clown head to head, and we'd be talking about Bernie would be going. Well, now we have Medicare for all, so we can handle this pandemic. And if they hadn't given him Medicare for all, and he was president, he'd be like, "This is why I've been saying we need Medicare for all," and I bet you we'd get it passed. It's taken a week to get this stimulus plan in place. 9-11 happened. They approved money for the Afghanistan invasion in like a day. The timeline was based on a certain uh, level of weeks from the time we started. And it happened to arrive. Actually, uh, we were thinking in terms of sooner. But Dr. Anthony Fauci, who returned to the coronavirus briefing stage yesterday, says not so fast. You can look at a date, but you've got to be very flexible and on a, on a literally day by day and week by week basis. Medical experts have spent weeks warning Americans against crowded spaces and aren't willing to loosen those restrictions just yet. No one is going to want to tone down things when you see what's going on in a place like New York City. So I think people might get the misinterpretation. You're just going to lift everything up and even somebody's going like that. You, I mean, that, that's not going to happen. It's going to be looking at the data. The president's comments came just hours after New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said that his state could see the coronavirus infections hit a peak in two to three weeks, and as other states are battling rising trends. Says I don't think he's listening to the science. Um, I think that he is, you know, operating. You know, he's looking at the stock market. The president's aggressive timeline received pushback from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney tweeted, there will be no normally functioning economy if our hospitals are overwhelmed. All right. That's Paula Reed reporting for us. So there's Trump. We're going to come back better than ever. We're going to start shopping by Easter. That's, that's, that's. We don't live, we live in like some banana republic. Like this is just a, this is a United Corporations of America. Like we're just a, a series, we're just owned by corp. We're, this isn't a country. A country has a government. Governments are supposed to really be, that's when you need a government is when there's a crisis like this. The top down, take care of everybody. They should be freezing. All of us can't work. They should be freezing rents and mortgages. We all have to pay rent in a week. And they, they gave like the banks money. They didn't give enough. Oh, here's what Joe Biden said about this stimulus plan. 
Can I ask you just to speak to the desperation? I think people feel like the things that the president's saying, and I misspoke earlier, mm -hmm. he's talking about turning the economy back on. The government um, is very much That's on, and, and my governor, Governor Cuomo, no. I think is, is, is one of the heroes on, on the front lines. Made a Hold on. Just, I just want you to first pay real close attention, Governor Cuomo. The DNC knows he's got dementia. And rather than go, all right, he's out. I guess Bernie's our guy, the guy that could absolutely win. They're going to try to slide in Cuomo. Cuomo Hillary ticket or something like that. Just, just be, be, be ready for that. And if Bernie says, oh, I'm going to back whomever. Omar posted, I'll back Biden and whomever. Why are you backing this guy? I just did a video showing that he's a rapist and a pedophile. He raped a, a, a child that was trafficked through Epstein. But just, I just want to show you, this is, this is MSNBC. Fox News is their own bullshit GOP mouthpiece. This is the propaganda arm for the filthy Democrats. Very he passionate is. plea, but there was desperation in his in his call for respirators. What what do you think of his leadership, and what do you think of the fact that he's not sure he has enough respirators for sick New Yorkers? By the way, I think he's doing a hell of a job. I think he has been the lead horse here. I've talked to him frequently. He's a friend. Uh, I think he's doing a great job. I really mean it. I'm not being solicitous. I genuinely mean that. <clears throat> but in addition to that, you know, mm -hmm. I called for a while ago for the implementation of what they call the uh, Defense Production Act. That's an act where it gives the president, if he mm -hmm. declares it and signs he or she declares it and signs it, the ability to go to corporate America and say... Now, this is true. This is something Trump said he was going to do and hasn't done it yet. Corporations are starting to do this on their own. Ford has just said, we're going to make ventilators. But this is... This is what happened like World War II. Stop making, you know, bicycles and cars and start making weapons for World War II. So what we need now is we need masks, we need ventilators, we need all this hospital equipment. So this pandemic is showing how dumb capitalism, how toxic, how deadly tax, uh, capitalism is. If we made all of our products here, we're, half of our medical supplies we get from China. <laughs> when we sanctioned Russia 10 years ago, we started when Obama started the sanctions against Russia, you know what Russia did? They went, okay, we better, we better support ourselves. They started growing all their own food. They had to make all their own products, including medical supplies, which is why Russia, a country of 146 million people, has very little infection. They closed the borders as soon as it happened. They share a border with China. They have very little infection. They have, they have public national health care system. They've had that. That's, well, that was under communism. They had that. This dumb country, and in this new bill, the, the and Bernie talked about it in his speech, you can get tests for free, but if you get sick from COVID-19 and have to go to the hospital, you're on your own. You better have good health insurance. If you don't, or if it's over, if your insurance doesn't cover it, you're on your own. And more Americans are gonna file for bankruptcy. But anyway, keep listening to these idiots. Stop manufacturing what you're manufacturing now and manufacture this. And he signed it, but he said he wasn't going to implement it. You know, there was a great line that Lincoln had when he, when General McClellan wasn't used in the army. He said, and I, he said, if you don't want mm -hmm. to use the army, can you lend it to me? Lincoln said that to his general. Yeah. Can you lend it? If he's not going to use it, lend it to somebody else, okay? Be president. Yeah. You say you're a wartime president. Act like that. We cannot waste any more time. You know, I'm, I'm reading to my eight-year-old about Lincoln in, in the time of no school, but I want to ask you about that. I, I mean, one of your hallmarks, as a, not just as a politician running for president in this year, but as President Obama's vice president, was your ability to connect. How were you able to do that? How were you able to stay connected to people during this period of, of mandated social distancing? Well, what I'm trying to do is uh, become much more facile in being able to use uh, social networking here. Uh, the fact is that uh, I'm in the basement of my home. <laughs> in the basement of my home. Me and too. Actually, 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But for example, when I, uh, I, I, I keep kissing I, his I, ass. In, in detail, a plan that ass. I thought we should be implementing a couple of days ago, and it didn't get that much coverage on national television, but they tell me over, I think, three and a half million people watched it online. And so I'm learning how to deal with the vehicles that are available to get news out and get communicate with people. Look, think about this. I am so, it sounds corny, I am so proud to be an American right now. Look at the way the nation is responding. Look at the way mm -hmm. ordinary people are reaching out. Look at how they're helping. Look at all these doctors and first responders. I was talking to some of the firefighters. Yeah, American people are really rallying. American people are really trying to help each other and get each other's back because they're realizing very quickly that they're on their own. The stimulus plan is, it's better than the other crappy one, but it's still not what it should be. And it's more of a wealth grab. Oh, they're going to loan you. They're going to give you low interest loans. And it's just more of a consolidating wealth, like what they did when he was vice president, when him and Obama gave the banks all this money to just steal people's homes. They're going to snatch up more people's homes. Trust me, in three months, you can't go, can't foreclose. You can't, they're going to, oh, okay. And three months from now, they're going to start snatching up people's homes. And the media won't cover it. And people will be screaming about it and they'll be shouted down. I, I've talked about it and I've had, I've had neoliberals, oh, Graham, you shut up about you didn't, the banks didn't steal your house. Big Biden supporters, big dumb neoliberals of, oh, Graham, shut up. Oh yeah, you didn't pay your bills. That's why you lost your, they didn't steal your house. They're shaming me. So 6 million people, we were all just lazy and just didn't pay our bills. We just wanted a freebie. 6 million people. The recession came and crushed people and took people's jobs and money away and retirement and savings. Ugh. So here's Bernie's response. Let's see what Bernie's, Bernie's response here is what, what he said. It is my belief that instead of having a government based on greed and corruption, we need to move forward in terms of uh, justice, in terms of economic justice, social justice, racial justice, environmental justice. Uh, we need to guarantee human rights to all of our people and end this unfettered capitalism and this uh, struggle, uh, survival of the fittest. And that means we must make health care a human right for all. It must mean that we guarantee a job for all of our people at decent wages. It must be that we understand that housing, affordable, high-quality housing, is a human right. That education is a human right. That when you turn on the water faucet in your house, you have the right make sure that that water is clean and the air that you breathe is clean and that when you reach old age that you will retire with security and dignity. So the goal right now is to do our best, taking on Trump and the Republican leadership in the Senate, the fight for working families. But in addition to that, our goal is to create an America that works for all of us and not just the few and the powerful. Good evening, and thank you very much. So his full speech, he gave it uh, earlier today. It's about 30 some minutes long. I suggest watching it. And then apparently he was on the hot floor of the Senate actually stopping the bill because they wanted to put all these other dumb things in it. Um, you know, Dylan, Dylan Radigan was on uh, Jimmy saying, you know, Bernie could have done more. He could have just flat out stopped this, but then he's on the floor stopping it. So... You know, I, I really, I really cannot predict anything that's going to happen. This is, I said, this will be the craziest election year any of us have ever seen. Now, I had no idea there was going to be a pandemic thrown on top of it, but that's what's happening. And we need Bernie to fight harder. We need, you know, we, we need all these things to happen. But um, that was his response. And I just want to, you know, we're going to get $1,200. 
you know, Canada is getting $2,000 for four months straight. We're going to get a one-time payment of $1,200. Bernie in his speech explains all of the problems, the things he doesn't like about this bill and the things that, that he does like. And, and, you know, this is the thing I, you know, there's a lot about Bernie. I obviously like part of the problem I think with him is he's a career politician, meaning that his philosophy is going to be to fight within the system. So it's not the bill I wanted, but I got an amendment passed and, you know, added on this and this. So it's better than it was, which is just like, you know, I'm a small business owner. I can get a loan, apparently. Any small business owner, you own a restaurant and you can get a low interest loan and that you that you don't have to pay that loan back provided you don't lay anybody off. The thing they don't tell you, the thing MSNBC won't tell you is big corporations will get loans, but they don't have to pay it back even if they lay off their staff. So it's just another if this bill has more hidden money in it that helps corporations gobble up more power and land and money. It's it we got so screwed in 2009 by Obama and Biden's bullshit thing, their stimulus plan. They should have just given money directly to people. Here's what, should, here's what this bill should do. It should shut everything down. Shut it down. Stop it. No one has to pay any bills. There's a freeze on all that. Right? Since nobody can work, all the bills are frozen for three months, for the next 90 days, and everyone's gonna get, you know, two grand a month for the next 90 days. Next three months, every, so the only bills you have to worry about are food and like, you know, some basic thing that you might else, you might need, you know what I mean? Some unforeseen thing, you get a flat tire, you need to fix your car so you can go to the store to get the food, whatever. But I want to show what somebody posted. I want to show what somebody posted. So this was, this is a list of demands for the COVID-19 release package that were put out there. Emergency UBI bill, pass Talib's mint the coin bill and give everyone prepaid debit card with 6,000 and 25K a week for two weeks or 5K a month for every US citizen, First Nations member, US territory member. Have the payments extend at least six months after the end of the pandemic. Expand Social Security and SSI for senior citizens and people with disabilities. This is what the bill should have, but it doesn't. Include the undocumented and prison inmates in the UBI bill. Have unemployment insurance be paid 100% up to $150,000. So they're increasing um, unemployment claims, but only up to 75 grand. Lindsey Graham didn't want to give people who don't make as much money shouldn't be getting more benefits. Oh yeah, that's how it should go, Lindsey. Let's, let's rich people who really don't need any stimulus. Let's make sure they get more stimulus and fuck the worker. Way to go, Lindsey Graham, you parasite. Um, protect non-traditional workers such as gig workers. There is some protections in this bill for gig workers that Bernie put in there. Have universal paid sick leave. Non-essential workers and non-working citizens issue a national shelter and place lockdown. Release all non-violent prisoners to their families and put them in hotels, motels. House the homeless in hotels, motels. Dramatically expand Meals on Wheels so that more people do not get exposed. Cancel all rent, mortgage, car, credit card, utility, including internet and student loan payments for at least six months after the end of the pandemic. Cancel them. Done. Federal government can give those companies the federal, you know, whatever. T-Mobile says, hey man, we collect, you know, $500 million a month. What do we, we can't, yeah, here, federal government, there you go. We all get free cell phones. We don't have to pay that bill. T-Mobile gets paid from the, you know, the Federal Reserve that just issues, it's, it's given Wall Street $6 trillion in the last month for no good goddamn reason. Um, Medicare for All enacted immediately. 
nationalize hospital, use the defense to, to get companies that we talked about earlier, like get four, companies are doing them on their own. There's a t-shirt company uh, manufacturer, a, a factory here in Southern California that got shut down because they were called non-essential. We don't need t-shirts. They started making masks, cotton masks. They refitted their, their machines, retrained their employees. The guy did it in a couple of days. Everyone's up and running. He started giving masks away to hospitals that needed it. Well, now he's getting orders, and actually now he's making money, and his staff is working. And See? That's what we do. I've heard Ford Motor Company is trying to figure out how to make ventilators and how to get that up and running. That's what you do. Mobilize the whole country. We are at war, right? Everybody says we're at war with COVID-19. Well, let's get everybody to work here. Deploy the Army National Guard and Army Corps event to build makeshift hospitals when needed. We're going to need extra beds. They've done that in New York. There's a convention center. Because here's the problem. If everybody goes to the hospital because they got COVID-19, then anyone that's got a regular ailment, you're sick, you fall down, you've, you've had asthma your whole life, diabetes, heart condition, anything, car accident, whatever, kid falls down, so that, 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 stuff, that stuff's still happening. I mean, they're preparing for, they're doing it in New York, they're preparing for it here. We have a Navy uh, hospital floating thousand bed boat that's coming up here to LA. Demand that all universities with multi-billion dollar endowments use their funds to equip the hospital staff with the necessary equipment. Seize all stadiums and use them as makeshift hospitals. Yeah, none of the leagues are playing. Every, every, every city has some arena that's not being used right now because there's no, there's no hockey or basketball. Reopen hospitals that have been shut down, dramatically expand community health centers, make COVID-19 testing treatment and vaccine free for everyone, emergency response workers, classify, classify all grocery workers, farm as emergency workers with all the given protections, Universal paid sick leave, universal health, all this stuff. Small businesses issue emergency grants so that they do not go under. Offer extra grant money if they need to keep their workers on payroll. Give paid sick leave to workers. Corporations tell them upfront to get a loan if possible. Pause the stock market. Hey, all I've heard is how great the stock market and the economy has been doing the last year. Don't these assholes save up? They tell us, you better, I, I was told I, was, I didn't manage my money well when I lost my house. Oh, I should have managed, you should have had more savings. Well, how come these corporations, how come fucking Bank of America doesn't have three months of savings to pay all of its payroll? You're a bank. Let the banks borrow money. The rest of us, no, we should just be given it if you're told us we're in the, we, we can't do this. Have a complete accountability tax force, that'd be nice. End the Cuba embargo and reach out to the doctors for assistance. End all sanctions so that those nations can receive the health care that they need. People in Iran are dying because we have these stupid sanctions on them. This is a global war against this virus. She also added... End bombing activity, send resources to Doctors Without Borders and other organs so that they're on the front line of fighting. Because again, we got to stop the spread, not just here, but around the world. So if there's third world countries and it starts spreading there and they don't have the equipment, they don't have anything like what, what we have, then we should help. We got to stop bombing. Can we stop bombing to, we can't drone strike COVID-19. So that's what she said. And I just added, great list of demands, I'll add, force all CEOs, billionaires, White House cabinet, Pelosi, McConnell, and their families to become frontline workers or go to jail. That's what I'm adding. Seize assets of all CEOs, billionaires, and give to laid off workers. Arrest all known Epstein associates and jail them. Because Jaleen Maxwell's running around out there. She's probably figuring out, I bet you those people are figuring out, boy, any kids we can snatch up during this thing? You know that they are. You know that they are. So that's what America, the leader in democracy, and we do everything right. What is Venezuela? Boy, they're crazy socialism. They're probably just going nuts down there because they're not as good as America. Oh, ghoul, 
Venezuela announces six-month wrench suspension, guarantees workers' rages, bans layoffs. This is what Venezuela is doing. Venezuela is doing what we should be doing. They're helping their people. That's what the government, just boom, six-month rent suspension. Six-month, boom. Nobody's paying rent for six months. Workers' wages, guaranteed, can't lay anybody off. Done. But we can't do that here. We somehow can't seem to figure that out. The idiot Democratic and Republican parties are going to bicker like little assholes until we all die. Something is wrong with the economic system of our nation. Something is wrong with capitalism. Maybe America must have moved toward democratic socialism. We must develop programs that will drive the nation to the realization of the need for a guaranteed annual income. Not here in the how are we going to pay for it, gang. The, the how are we going to pay for it crowd, boy, they're real quiet during this. No problem. $2 trillion bailout, most of it going to banks. Hmm. When the corporate media would lie, Bernie, you won't be clear about your Medicare for all, how much it's going to cost. Joe Biden would lie. Bernie wouldn't fight back that hard. It's a banana republic. COVID-19 ain't going anywhere. We're all going to have to just fight for ourselves and just get $1,200 a month and more debt and lose our homes. That's, what, that's what's going to happen from this. They, the detestable ruling class, the soulless, amoral, useless bags of shit, see this global biological pandemic and went, boy, how can we use this to our advantage? How can we scoop up? We need more wealth. We only got 80% of the wealth after the, the last recession where Obama gave us everything we wanted. How do we get a little more? How do we squeeze a little more out of Americans who were already, 60% of Americans didn't have $500 to $1,000 in savings before this pandemic? Okay. Vote for Joe Biden, you any blue will do it. morons. You any blue will do idiots. You're idiots. Good luck. Good luck with that. Good luck. Joe Biden's a rapist. Trump's a rapist. This is the, this is the two-party system. This is what the two-party system looks like. This is what they're doing. Just idiots. People are dying. Venezuela is helping their people. Dr. King talked about this 50 some years ago. Hey everybody, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing many of you every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockman.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.